Hello there. This is going to be more vlog style. Um, I've had some thoughts lately that I haven't fully formulated yet. And so this is me just trying to work through my thoughts as I talk to you. So um, where do I begin? So I recently uh, finished uh, editing a video about transformation. So long story short, um, I'll leave the link to the video uh, so you can watch it and have a little more context if you need it. But uh, in a video I made about a year ago, I said that I think non-parametric statistics are basically useless. And what I meant was rank-based non-parametric statistics. And somebody commented and said that I made misleading claims. And uh, long story short, he and I had a back and forth and I ended up making a video about it. And so... Um, Throughout this process, I've been thinking a lot about non-parametric models and robust data analysis and models in general. And um, in the midst of all that, I got a question from one of my students. And she wrote, I'm going to read it. What is the argument to robustify data? It sounds like this isn't a great idea. And I'm curious how it's justified when people do it. And uh, <laughs> it actually made me laugh when I read this um because it sounds like she's saying are these people crazy like why would they do this and her thought makes perfect sense given the way that i've taught her and the fact that she's my student and one of the dangerous things about being a teacher um of people who know nothing about statistics most of the time is they're highly influenced by your opinions and and i find it I, I just find it funny that she's um, adopting <laughs> some of my attitudes that I've taught um, because I know there are a lot of people who are very much into robustness and very much into non-parametric procedures and they would be aghast that I have imprinted on my students this attitude. Um, and it makes sense. Um, but I still believe what I believe, and I'll tell you why. And I'll go ahead and read my response and then clarify what I mean here in a bit. So what I wrote is, Robustifying makes sense if you're concerned about testing hypotheses. Those who test hypotheses tend to look at p-values and only p-values. They don't look at plots, estimates, diagnostics, etc. Now that's kind of an overgeneralization. I'm sure there are um, statisticians out there who are really into robustness who are concerned about models. But most of the time, when you're talking about robustness, you're um, talking about their robust violations, their assumptions, meaning that your hypotheses are unaffected. So for the most part, if you're talking about robustness, you're talking about testing hypotheses. Anyway, continuing on. And for them, it's a shot in the dark whether their p-values are meaningful. When testing is your aim, it's very important to make sure your p-values are accurate and robustifying is the way they can ensure that they don't step barefooted on Legos. Love that metaphor. When they're venturing into the darkness. Robustifying allows them to play it safe in the probability department. So let me, I guess let me explain a little more what I mean. Um, so if you are testing hypotheses and that is your only goal, it becomes easy to ignore uh, visualizations, estimates, diagnostics, and those sorts of things. And I'm making an overgeneralization here because I'm sure there are robustness people who do invest a lot of time in those things. But... In my experience, it tends to be that those who are testing hypotheses and concerned with hypothesis testing, they often ignore plots, estimates, diagnostics, those sorts of things. So if you are ignoring those things, it really is you're walking into the darkness because you don't know what your data are saying. You're just hoping that your p-values are accurate. And so if you are in that situation where you are kind of in the dark, then... Um, then you are very concerned about whatever problems there might be that you at least have a robust data set that is not going to be affected. And so um, my students, I teach, I and mean, I didn't even realize I was doing this until recently, and I didn't realize how important it was that I was doing this, but I teach from a modeling perspective. So when I... I I think statistics is all about building models. And we can use those models for hypothesis testing, but that's not our end goal. Our end goal is the model itself that can be infinitely adapted to whatever circumstances 
we need to use it for. And so, yeah, if you have a teacher who talks about things from a modeling perspective and you're introducing a concept that is taught from a testing perspective, of course it's going to look ridiculous. And that is a little unfair to somebody who's within the testing um, sort of framework. And again, like I said, there are some that look at plots and estimates and diagnostics, but um, when they do it, it's to make sure that they're testing hypotheses, um, that their p-values actually mean something. And then so maybe robustness plays a role in that. But anyway, what I, again, I'm from a modeling perspective, so I'm not really worried about whether my p-values are meaningful. Um, and that's really for two reasons, because uh, the first reason is that I interpret my p-values within a much larger context. It's not the only thing I'm looking at. I'm looking at visuals, I'm looking at estimates, I'm looking at uh, diagnostics, I'm looking at residuals. I've got lots of information about the data to tell me if my, tr uh, if my p-value can be trusted. Um, and second, um, and maybe this really isn't all that different, but uh, when I look at p-values, um, or I'm sorry, when I look at visuals, they give me at a glance uh, an understanding of how accurate my p-value is going to be. And so I can tell from the visuals if I met the assumptions and if there are outliers driving my um, analysis or something like that. And so, yeah, p-values uh, play a much more minimal role when you're doing things from a modeling framework. And so if you are a model, your primary concern is to find a model that accurately represents your data. And so robustifying your data is counter to that. Now, let me explain what I mean. So when you robustify your, and I'm talking about a specific way of robustifying your data, because you can like logistic regression is technically a robust model. It, it uh, has minimal, if any, assumptions, and it's really not affected by non-normality, outliers, those sorts of things. It's fine. Uh, that's not what I mean. What I mean here is um, what are called modern robust methods, where essentially what you do is you take the bottom 10-ish percent of your data and the top 10-ish percent of the data and get rid of it. And then you model just the middle. And then you end up having a, what's called a Windsorized variance that recognizes the fact that you cut out a lot of your data. And then you compute uh, probabilities through bootstrapping. So that's what I mean by robustifying your data. You're using modern robust methods. Um, and so if you're a modeler, to me, my personal opinion that is very new, that is flexible. And if you feel otherwise, I'd be interested in discussion. But so if you're a model, or, well, let's think about what a model is, what a model means. A model is a simplification of reality and it retains the essential features and ignores the non-essentials. I'm borrowing that definition from Joe Rogers. So if you're a modeler, again, your primary concern is to come up with a representation, uh, with um, a mathematical expression that captures reality. But if you are robustifying your data, you are manipulating the data. And I guess I see data as the reality we're trying to model. And so if you are modifying reality, you're not modeling territory anymore. At least that's the way that I see it. And so your model is a really biased representation of reality. Now, on the other hand, you can say, well, maybe that whole trimming the bottom and the top is part of that simplification of reality. So you still are connected to reality. And sure, I can see that argument. Um, but I guess I would much rather model the data as it is than include this exercise of getting rid of parts of my data. So I guess the way that I see it is when you robustify things, you are artificially, uh, you're, you're placing an artificiality on reality that isn't necessary. Now, to answer a question that you may be asking, does that mean that robust models are useless? And I would say no, which seems counter contrary to what I was saying. Um, and again, if you haven't watched that other video, I'll go ahead and leave a link to that other video that gives a little more context to this. Um, basically, I see robust models as a pit stop on the way to building a model. So they can be convenient to use as long as you recognize that that is not the end game. The end game is to have a model, not a 
pseudo model that is based on a skewed representation of reality. And so the way that I use modern robust methods is let's say I am fitting a model and I'm looking at the visuals. I'm like, uh, that could be that we have some hetero skedasticity or that outlier may be a problem. So then what I will do is I will fit a um, robust, modern robust method sort of uh, model. And then what I do is I do basically a sensitivity analysis. I look at the model where I don't handle that problem and then the model where I robustify the data. And if the conclusions are the same, then I'm like, okay, I don't need this kind of artificiality. I don't need this complexity that this robust model gives me. So I'm just gonna get rid of it um, and stick with the simpler model. On the other hand, there are times where I do a robust model and it says, yeah, your conclusions are gonna change substantially if you robustify your data. So then I say, all right, it's time to put in some muscle and try to figure out a model that actually handles these data problems. And so again, it's just a pit stop. Uh, it let me know that yes, these outliers or heteroscedasticity or whatever I'm dealing with are gonna be a problem and you need to deal with that problem. And then I might use a generalized linear model or a nonlinear model or something like that. My thoughts all worked out. But that's my story for now, and I'm sticking to it for now. Uh, and I say for now because this is, a, this is a new insight, new opinion that's coming to me. And it may be that somebody in the comments says, you know what? And then they make a really good point that I hadn't thought about, and it might totally change my mind about it. Um, in fact, I kind of hope that happens. I like when my mind is changed. I like learning new things. So if you do have a defense of robustifying methods in the context of what I've said, then please let me know. I'd be very interested to hear what you have to say. But anyway, yeah, I think that's all I got to say for now. So peace out.